What's up, shelf addicts? Welcome back to the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Today on Book Chat, we are covering the March Buddy Read, the first book of a new crime mystery series, Hide, written by Tracy Clark. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm your host Tamara and welcome back to the podcast. If you're new here, we feed your shelf addiction with fun book conversations, bookish topics, and more. It's like listening in on your favorite book club. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official or on the book club's app. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's show. You can always find me and Classy on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe before you leave. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows, special episodes, and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. As always with Book Chats, we talk spoilers here, so you've been warned. Without further ado, let's begin. We've got a lot to talk about today, so we are going to jump right to it. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hey there, Tamara. Uh, happy March. Happy March. Women's History Month. All that. All the yes. things. Okay. So, guys, before we start the discussion, if you are interested in today's after show, head on over to Patreon to watch it. We're talking about maybe some book news and some other random things. So, head on over and enjoy that. Today, we are talking about the book Hide, book one in the Detective Harriet Foster series, written by Tracy Clark. The audiobook was narrated by Shante McCormick. This book was published on January 1st, 2023 by Thomas and Mercer and Brilliance Audio. The paperback comes in at 369 pages and the unabridged audio is 11 hours and 55 minutes. Classy, would you kindly share the synopsis? Absolutely. When a young red haired woman is found brutally murdered in downtown Chicago, one detail stands out. The red lipstick encircling her wrist and ankles. Detective Harriet Foster is on the case, even though she's still grieving the sudden death of her partner. As a black woman in a male-dominated department, Foster anticipates a rocky road ahead, acclimating to a new team, and building trust with her new partner isn't coming easily. After another victim turns up with the same lipstick markings, Foster suspects she's looking for a serial killer. Through a tip from a psychiatrist, Foster learns about Bodie Morgan, a troubled man with a twisted past and a penchant for pretty young redheads with the bluest eyes. As Foster wades onto Morgan's sinister history, the killer continues their gruesome assault on Chicago Street. In her desperate race to catch the murderer before they strike again, Foster will have to confront the darkest of secrets, including her own. All righty. High level. When you finished the book immediately after, (sighs) what did you think? I was frustrated. Oh, mm -hmm. I was very frustrated. Um, Tracy is is one of my um, go-to authors. She's an autobi author for me. I'll still you know, by her. Uh, this is a new series. So I was, I was like excited, like, okay, a new series, even though once you get used to another character, you're just like, why are you going to stop? Mm-hmm. But I was frustrated. Um, I felt like the story was going round and round mm-hmm. and round. And I, I was frustrated. Okay. I really was. Is that high level enough? Um, Okay. That's fair. So high level, I said, "Eh, that was okay. That was my final, like, you know, when I literally, I finished, I'm like, hmm, okay. And nothing memorable. (laughs) No, but one thing was pretty memorable to me, and that is how cartoonish the killer ended up being at the end. Like, 
And by cartoonish, I mean, I could see her rubbing her hands together saying, I'll kill you and your dog. <laughs> like the witch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she was so over the top at the end. Like this put together person is like Looney Tunes at the end. And I yeah. thought that was very cartoonish in comparison to how that character had been for the whole book. So, right, I I literally laughed. And even Silva, <laughs> right, and even Silva, when she was describing the killer um, to Detective Lee and to Detective Foster, they, when you said that, it just made me think because I think I even wrote that down that they said the description that Silva is giving us doesn't match because they thought it, because Silva thought it was Bodhi. Mm -hmm. And she's like, it doesn't match. Because, you know, Silva was like, this is an altogether high, um, highly intelligent criminal who knows exactly what they're doing. And they're looking at Bodhi, who's all disheveled and just, you know, anxious. And so, yeah, you're right. For this whole time, you have this high-functioning Amelia who blends in and and I mean I don't know if she was trying to say she finally cracked under the pressure oh, no. of, you know like the facade her I'm personality not sure, I, went I, from like Hannibal to like um the Joker uh, you know what I mean it was just like what yeah <laughs> screaming and hollering right and even I think when you said that I think it didn't Lord <laughs> Lorigan or her um Foster's original partner I, I think we might got to talk about that mm -hmm. too um he said you know you we're looking for more Hannibal Lecter and not witty mm -hmm. somebody and I meant to look up that killer and I couldn't remember the name of the killer so yeah you're right yeah it was it was it was it was yeah there were some things it was just like uh, it was too long for it was a police procedural you know, true, not true crime, but, you know, like police detective thing. But I just felt like there were just moments that this just took a lot forever. So I'm glad you mentioned to to that it's a procedural, right? So those are mm -hmm. usually mysteries. But for mm -hmm. some reason on the cover, it says a Detective Harriet Foster thriller. And mm. I didn't quite get thriller vibes i got mystery vibes and police procedural obviously that's a very obvious one but thriller no no not, there was nothing not sure. thrillerish <laughs> no no mm, maybe no. if okay so not to rewrite the book i try not to do that but you know my brain is always going maybe if you know harriet had something personal invested in this you know in this crime fiasco and maybe if they had some kind of thing about her which you know wasn't really realized it was like a little bit of stalking of her but it wasn't realized nothing there were some things that could have made it more thriller-ish to me that did not really happen no no right and even from the synopsis when they said, <clears throat> let's see, let's go back to that last statement, which was she had to uncover dark secrets of her own or something. So when I read that, and like you were saying on the cover, it says thriller. Mm -hmm. I was thinking too, like, okay, because you know, when those kind of things happen in police procedurals and when the the killer is becoming involved with the police, they do begin to play the psychological, you know, mind game with the, the detective or police officer by kind of going into their history and finding their dark secrets. And I could see, like you were saying, now if the killer did that, that would have been thrilling. Yeah. You know, knowing you know, she lost her partner. Her son was killed. You know, playing on those yep. um, antics. I mean, not antics, but those parts of her life, those dark secrets, because... 
trying to best her, her or something. Yeah. yeah, even her partner didn't know that. They knew about her partner committing suicide, but they didn't know that her son was murdered. No, and at one point, so, yeah, I think, I can't remember what chapter, I should have marked it. But, you know, the person said, like, mm, something is off with her, something about her, you know. But, again, it wasn't fully explored. It kind of was just thrown out there and left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even the killer, like when she would go to that tree and talk to the tree and the killer, you know, because the killer was watching mm-hmm. her and she's like, is she a tree hugger? Why is she going to that tree? Now, that would have been that opportunity to fucking play with Harriet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Are we getting like dark over here? But that's what a thriller is, right? That's what it is. It is, you know, because it's like, oh. She wants to try and solve this crime. She thinks she's going to get me like you said. She's going to best me. <laughs> okay, Miss Harriet Foster. Mm-hmm. I know about your secrets. Exactly. But there was none Nobody of that. Nobody else knows, but I do. No. No. You know, like, just dropping, you know, like, instead of those little cigarette butts, she might drop, you know, because her son was a, a Chicago Cubs fan. You know, she might drop some little memorabilia. You know, mm-hmm. play with her mind. Mm-hmm. But, Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask this. Y'all know we talk spoilers. We unspoil it. You've you've been warned. We jump around. You've been warned. Been warned. Um, warned. Oh, I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> I was here and I was like, You've been warned. Hey. Yeah, you I'm can't warned. see what she's wa- <laughs> waving this cute wand. Um yeah. but I knew who the killer was very early on. Very early. <sighs> And I was waiting and waiting. I'm like, okay, show it to me because I know it's her because of how, why is she following her brother? Why is she doing that? Why? I'm like, no, it's her. Yep. It's obviously yep. not the I brother. I knew it pretty, I mean, very early on. Oh, yeah. Almost like what? Because he got out of, of um, the mental institution and she was like checking up on him. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, man. Yeah, it's her. her. And so I was not surprised at all. And I just, I was like, show me the proof. And then also when the doctor started getting involved, like, you know, trying to throw um, Bodhi under the bus, I'm like, why? Why? Why is that? You know, I'm like, what is her game? I said, she trying to like publish something on him. (laughs) And then she's trying to publish something on him. (laughs) You know, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. so a lot of the things that were supposed to like make you question things or, you know, kind of be red herrings. Those did not work for me. I knew what they were. Immediately. Yeah, because even the cops were trying to say, no, this couldn't be a woman. Women don't do this. And how did she drag the body? And, you know, because. The, they were killed one place and dragged to another spot. And so, yeah, I, but yeah, I knew it was, um, I can't remember where, I think it was the line when, when they had discovered, well, Bodie had discovered the body. Okay. Audience. Their father was a serial killer, and he killed people in the house, in the basement. And Bodhi came upon the dead body. And I guess he either, I don't know if he screamed or he just stood there, and Amelia came mm-hmm. in. And her reaction was totally different. And if you've read enough mystery, thriller, suspense, crime, whatever, you know the mind of a killer almost you know it's like you kind of understand the dynamics of unless but not all the time now there are some writers out there that will throw you or Mm -hmm. loop like i did not see that Mm -hmm. coming but most of the time you know you 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 watch and here we have twins they're fraternal twins and the one twin freaked out and the other one kind of was just not phased Mm -hmm. at all and they both live these lives of normalcy of not, you know, well, the facade of normalcy, 
going to school, not telling people. But her reaction versus Bodhi's reaction, I think, kind of let me know she's the killer. Yeah. That's when I, I realized that. Yeah. And we did find out, you know, he had been grooming her on purpose. Like, it was an experiment. Can I make her like me? Can I do this? And so one thing that I wasn't, again, I wasn't surprised by it at all was the fact that we learned that they were basically kidnapped when they were children. Like they were toddlers or whatever age. And that, you know, their quote unquote father, serial killer, killer father, killed the mother, lied about it, and raised them as his own. And I was not surprised at all. I don't know. Mm-mm. And I don't know what the clue. No, it was never the, it was never a no. <gasps> moment. Never no. in this book. So I thought that was wild. And that kind of plays into the whole nurture versus nature thing. Because she yeah. was taught that. And it worked for her, but not the brother. Yeah. <laughs> Although the brother could but never I mean, get his shit together and say, and he even said in the book, like, why can't I just go to the police and say it's him? It's him. You know, why? And I think it's because he felt that was his family. But that's why when he said he figured out, you know, he read the material that was given to him. He's like, I'm free. I never have to speak to either one of their asses again. (laughs) Deuces. Cody said Mm -hmm. deuces, y'all. Yeah. said, I'm out of here. But also with the nurture versus nature thing, I also would like to say even even if you think about it in families where there were the mother and father are biological um one child you know will take to the child rearing um style of you know what the parent you know what I mean the rigors or whatever however the the parent wants them you know how they say I raised both of y'all and you turned out this way I think it's too it's just because of you know that the the nature of that person Mm -hmm. and that the the father who raised them like you say, he, there was an experiment, and he sat there and he watched. Is it's it's the grooming process, just like with with sexual predator. They watch. They know who is more malleable to what they're looking yeah. for. And he realized with Bodhi that yeah, he was a wild card, but I can't. He ain't gonna listen, like homegirl Mm -hmm. you know because she basically she was like a daddy's girl she's you know whatever he she looked up to him and Bodhi was just like nope he's a killer I don't care what nobody say Mm -hmm. (laughs) he my daddy but he crazy yeah I mean she the killer what's her name again it is uh Amelia Anika Anika slash Amelia slash whatever she want to be called and we'll talk about that too. Like, cause I, did I miss that? Okay. Can, let's put uh-huh. a pin in that. Put a pin in that about the, Amelia. So her name was Anika. She was born mm-hmm. Anika. But he changed her name to Amelia. But he didn't change Bodie's name. What the fuck? Maybe he thought Bodie's name sound how he thought it should sound, quote unquote. <laughs> I was like, how did Anika sound why real? Did... From, you know, re- easily to identify. It's very unique. Yeah. It's, um... Okay. Bodie is unique. I almost because I kept saying, "Is it Bodie yes, or Brody? Brody?" And then when I looked in the yeah. book, because you know, because you know, we'll go on the the narrator situation later. Because I wasn't sure because the narrator intonation and you know threw me a few times so I wasn't sure until I started reading the book and I was like okay so it is mm-hmm. Bodhi not Brody yeah. so okay so okay Anika is yeah Anika would stand out if red flags would be raised with Anika but you know you're right Bodhi isn't very common either no 
No. Hmm. Not at all. No. But I was just like, why are you going to change her name and not mm-hmm. his? But anyway. I forgot what I was going to say now. Let's move on. Damn it. <laughs> <I forgot>. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. Something about the killer Amelia. Um, the nurture. We were talking about nature and nurture in Amelia. Oh. So the whole time. The whole time. I'm like, was she trying to lure her father back? Or, because, you know, they had a plan, quote unquote, right? She knew he was around, but she claimed she didn't, you know, she was waiting for him to make contact, I think. Like when he Mm -hmm. walked into the art gallery looking for her. She was super excited that he was there. She was like giddy. I'm like, right. oh, that's my uncle. I said, girl, that's your daddy. Why you trying to? You ain't fooling nobody. <laughs> but no. I'm like, she's right. She wasn't surprised. Yeah. She wasn't surprised no. that he was. Yeah, it was. It was almost like about time, or she wanted to the prove time had that come. she could be like him. Yeah, she was like, "What did he say about my paintings? Oh, he liked them." Oh, I had to, you know, I only had this knife and it wasn't a saw. So I had to like draw the lines where I would have cut off the the appendages (laughs) with lipstick. Mm, Okay, girl. So childlike in that way. I didn't like that. Yeah, it's weird, right? That's what the lipstick was Mm -hmm. for. This is where I would have cut off the arms, the the hands and the feet, but I didn't have a saw. Yeah. 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 Um, I was waiting for something way more sinister. Way more sinister. Yeah. I was just, <laughs> I was just like, okay, lipstick. What's the lipstick for? What's the lipstick for? She, and that you know, was she's it. showing her daddy. I would do it like you, but I don't have a side. <laughs> I'm a grown woman. I mean, we're an art studio. Oh my god! Right? Like. You can't go buy a saw. Right. But I think that would have not really worked for how she was killing and where she was leaving bodies. Like, that would have been the hugest mess ever. Okay. And unless you do it and then just scatter the pieces around. I mean, I don't know. I it, um, it started to get a little bit, like, even I'm trying to think back to, like, when they were watching the videos, you know, the, the videos of, like, the the spaces near the the river and all the things they were trying to see who was walking with the first woman who was killed. You know, they were really trying to figure this out. And some of it, I probably should have gone back and read that section after hearing what Amelia had to say, but I'm like, I could not, I knew it was her, but it didn't really read. Right. Like her. Right. So I'm like, well, it started to get a little convoluted, I think. It did. And and even like the police were saying, this isn't what a, a woman would do. But I mean. She was mimicking a man. Nothing is she written- wasn't doing what she would yeah. do. Yes. Right. And she had to drag the mm-hmm. bodies. So um, because, you know, she we, we never did. Um, I don't even know. Did we get a description of Amelia? Like. You know, like body size, like was she strong? Was she able to possibly, you know, like dragging a body? How hard is it? Mm-hmm. You know, it is she a, a little bitty woman? Is she a bigger? You know, I don't think I remember any kind of description of her, her stature or build um, or anything. Physica- yeah, yeah, her physicality. Um, so, but yeah, that those those moments of her sliding through that little gap between um the the underpass i think so yeah that was like the only thing but i mean even because you know like usually with with crimes the walk of the the perp you know Mm -hmm. because somebody's oh that's a woman that's not a man Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the gate that's a woman yes like how could you yeah that gate and you and that wasn't mentioned, no. um, which I mean, I get 
as an author, she probably wouldn't want to throw that in there. But, you know, but those are types of things that as a detective, when you're watching hours of film, you know, Kate is like recognizable. Yes. And that's the that's one thing that I think, you know, when they were talking about, well, it doesn't look like the woman was scared or you know she doesn't look like she's being forced to walk i'm like well that's because she's walking with a woman not a man Mm -hmm. and you know when her artist friend talked about how scary her father looked i'm like well clearly it really that reemphasized it's really not him that was a woman that's why when they were talking about it i'm like well it wasn't a man (laughs) that's why yep these all the men that they they considered Yeah, all the men they considered at the onset of this book were all, like, whack dudes, like... Right, and the hackles of a woman was like, get the fuck out of here! Yeah. Or you, right, you're good. there's going to be some defensive wounds, there's going to be some, yeah, but it wasn't. She became familiar, that she probably chatted them up, you know, at the little rally, and they started walking, and before you know it, Oh, okay. Loose end also plot, uh, like plot hole. Unless I missed it. Tell me if I missed it. Did we ever find out why Amelia touched that black kid with blood on her? Mm -mm. Because guess what? I was going to ask you, did I miss it? (laughs) I'm like, you frame, you try to frame this little kid. He do shit. Well, cause right. Cause it, well, it went from, cause, cause I was wondering, was this like her moniker because she touched him with a, a, a like it was I'm just using an example it was basically almost like a thumbprint of blood right like a little dot it wasn't a lot and yeah. then the next, right and that blood that was on him was from like what her a previous kill so what are you carrying out a vial out. of blood well, how are you doing that because the next kill, that dot of blood was on what the, the 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 victim's thigh, and that belonged to the first victim. So we never knew where the blood was. So I don't know because it. I, I was thinking like, is it because of like the painter thing? Because there was a point in because I did write that down. I think it was in chapter forty six where she mentioned when she started her paint, she started with a dot. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh. So it's her leaving her mark, but... Yeah, I was wondering if that was, like, her moniker. But why does she leave it on this live kid that's knocked the fuck out versus the body where she left it on the body the other time? I don't know. I don't know if she, like, maybe she bumped him or... Because what? Because I think they said in the in the steals that, the, you know, from the film that she was watching, she basically kind of went up to him. I don't know if maybe, maybe she was trying to throw them off. That's all I could think of. Cause he yeah. was there. He was, he was there. basically had passed out. He probably had got some Molly got hold of I think of he some... was drugged. He doesn't remember. Mm-hmm. So he definitely was drugged. He doesn't seem like the kid. I don't think he was lying about doing drugs. I think he yeah. was drugged. He walked into yeah. the wrong area and fucking passed out. Like literally. Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, he was like a perfect alibi for, not an alibi, but, you know, somebody to, to, to pawn the crime off on. And how perfect. Here's a this perfect young person black guy. for con- confirmation bias. And that is what um, L- Lorigan, is that his name? Lorigan? I don't know. That is mm-hmm. what he was trying to do at first. Yep. And Foster's yeah, like, exactly. dude, let's just wait <laughs> until we get. The labs and everything. Like, calm down, dude. Chill, bro. <laughs> yeah. But it was. It was perfect. Here you got mm-hmm. this passed out kid. And and she hadn't um even she mentioned it where she hadn't um mastered her craft. So maybe you know, this was she was just kind of getting into her groove of things. So you know, yeah, the little blood on homeboy didn't work. Mm-mm. And then she did the thigh of the next one. But they could never figure out what whose blood it was, you know, with him. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But that, that, because that was, like you said, another plot hole. I'm like, okay, I don't care. 
about all the rest of that. Who blood was that? Mm-hmm. Tracy. Who's blood? Who's blood? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like a throwaway because um, Lonergan, that's his name, Lonergan, I think. Um, like that whole, they were only paired for like a millisecond, like two days. And to be honest, excuse me, I am grateful that the author did not drag us through that relationship for the whole book because that would have been painful. Yeah. But I was yeah. really upset that we wasted a lot of time on Ainsley, Keith Ainsley. Hmm. I mean, granted, you know what? Even if you use Keith as a possible alibi, or not an alibi, but um, a possible suspect, fine but you still didn't let us know where that blood came from right like tie that up for me because that again that is one of my i'm like okay so we went we spent all this time a lot of time and i get that possibly what she was trying to do but didn't wrap it up no she could have came back she could have had foster come back around like in the last chapter after she got her 80 stitches and went back to the mother and said, hey, dude, yeah, we found the killer and this is how he got the blood. So sorry. Bye. <laughs> I mean, it didn't even have to be like a big thing, but just like, yeah, let's just piggyback around to all the things like that was a big ordeal in the beginning of the book. It was it was a real big ordeal. Yeah. I mean, you like they came back to him the- again. So not only did they pull him in for questioning after he got out the hospital, they then went to his house to harass him some more after the second killing. So it's like they spent some time on him before his video, yeah. which, by the way, that dang on stupid detective was like, did he play that game in this house or did he take the, the laptop? And the father's like, man, get get out of here right now. <laughs> get out. That was like... <laughs> Right. Fuck you. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Don't come back here unless you have a warrant and better excuse than that dumb shit. Don't come back. <laughs> right. That doesn't prove he was in here. Mother- that dad probably was like, motherfucker, if you don't get the fuck out of my house. Exactly. Like, that was so Please. big a deal. Come back around and satisfy that mother. Because, you know, the mother was like, you know what this does. You quit playing. What is this? And you know what? Tamara, that's exactly when you said that that just resonated with me as a mother as a mother of two black boys that part if you didn't do anything else tie that up mm-hmm. especially in this in this you know climate because i'm not sure i'm assuming tracy wrote this you know during that height of um George Floyd and some other things because what this is what we're into what year three of the pandemic Mm -hmm. and that was like around that time but you know if you're going to accuse a black man Mm -hmm. of a crime baby right let's wrap this shit up if he is innocent let us know I mean granted as a reader we are but where did whose blood is on his jacket Granted, it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, just, just wrap that up because, you know, um, I'm a fan of Tracy's everybody. I'm a fan of Tracy. She is a Chicago writer. I live in the Chicagoland area. So reading this story and hearing of all of these locations that she's talking about, it resonates with me because I know where these spots are, you know, and that's probably why I, I do enjoy reading her stories. Cause I'm like, I know that spot. I know that spot. Yeah. So, and, and in Chicago and in other, you know, major cities, Black men being accused of crimes um, of convenience or, you know, police br- brutality and all that, it's easy to pin a crime on a black man. Mm-hmm. So to not tie that up, you know, kind of, it, it, you know, it, 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 it kind of left me a little like, <sighs> I need yeah. you to tie that, you know, put a bow on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just let's just that like kid needed to know that the law did its job this time and that, you know, he was never he was not in danger of ever coming going to jail from you know, he they were not yeah. coming back 
for him ever because that kid was and clearly that, shaken. Right. And just and not just that, he was a medical student. You know what I mean? It, it, he it, it, his livelihood, his future. Um Although I don't think yeah. they did. They never arrested him. They just questioned no, him. No, they still. did not. But still, just that mark, you know, just that, that blemish. And it's not going to be in his record, but damn, you know, that's enough to drive you bonkers. That's that enough no to throw didn't... him off his path because he could be so stressed by all of that. He could just change about face. That's enough to do that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. When you said that, that's what it, it resonated with me. Like, it doesn't take much for our young black men to to go off that path. You know, granted, he's he he has you know parents who are um, lawyers, and he's in medical school, and blah blah blah, and and yeah, they found clofenine or whatever in his his system, and blah blah blah, but all that, yeah, and this kid was him just, yes. And not only yep. that, this kid was an exception to the rule because he had money. He had lawyers for yep. parents. That is not the norm. That they would have railroaded a poor kid. Yep. Yep. With exactly. parents not so smart about the law. Yep. Exactly. So that was, you know, that was something that I was just kind of waiting on, but I did not, it did not um, come to pass. So, yeah. So, yeah. I do, yeah. Okay, we're over. Let's take a break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to finish our discussion. There's lots more to discuss. So check out these commercials by listening to those. You are supporting the podcast. If you don't like commercials, guess what? You can come on over to Patreon and check out the video version, or you can even listen in the background, leave the video playing, and guess what? No commercials there. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, welcome back, guys. (laughs) Where should we go to next? What should we cover next? Actually... I would love to point out something I really did love in the book. Okay, let's do that. I loved the pairing of Foster and Lee. We have a black woman and an Asian woman. Loved it. Yeah, yeah, it was. And um, what I do like with Tracy's characters is the the snarkiness. Mm -hmm. And I love... um, (laughs) Are you about to say that same scene? <laughs> I loved it. I was just like, thank goodness she took. And it was like, I don't even know when they actually like became partners. <laughs> that was the other part. It was like, they just kind of like fell into this relationship mm-hmm. because Larnigan kept, you know, when the going got tough, he left. And Lee was just like, I got some hot dogs. Want to basically? She was like, "I got some hot dogs. You want to hang out? I'll watch some videos." And it was. I loved their relationship. It was perfect. Um, it, it was like they Lee was the yin to her yang. Yes. It was. It she was, was snarky. It was, she said what she wanted. It was like the perfect, almost comedic um, break from the other. Because, like, the one part where Foster is, like, sitting, like, in the dark, and Lee comes in, like, why are you sitting in the dark like a weirdo or something, she says. And she's like, oh, did I say that last part out loud? (laughs) She's like, yeah. She's like, you been here all all night? Oh, wait. Are those the same clothes you got yeah. on? Oh my God. Yeah. 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 And it was, and it was really what, um foster needed you know after losing her partner to suicide she needed that you know Mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, it was. It was. I I loved it. And like I and I was going to ask you too, because you know there's times when you're reading and you're just like, did I miss something? And I was like, I don't think they were officially assigned to be partners, but oh, they were at one point. So what okay, ha- what had happened was I think oh, yeah, that, Griffin. Yeah. yeah. So she's the boss lady, and she as a <laughs> um, Foster always says boss. Boss, <laughs> you know, she calls her boss. I guess she noticed that old boy was just gone. He just wandered off and she had heard her check him. You know, she had seen confrontation with them already. So she had dropped to Lee that there may be a change. And Lee actually admitted to her like, yeah, that, that whole thing, I kind of had a feeling it might switch. So I was kind of testing the waters there. Hope you forgive me. Let's move on. And she did. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. I liked I liked them two together. Mm-hmm. Um, Even in that is... final fight, like that fight between Amelia. Oh my gosh! So they're in. The, okay, so they go into this house, y'all. They know they're not supposed to go in there, but the door was unlocked, and Lee's like, "Um, we're gonna go in." And she's <laughs> like, "What? We cannot." <laughs> I love that because you know what. You need that friend. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you have that one rational friend and you have the irrational friend. Yes. Yeah. 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 I loved it. And she's like, um, ex- exigent circumstances. And she's like, yeah, that's not going to fly. We're going to be like, kick that back to traffic, you know, cop or something. But they go like, in. We're going to be on desk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They go in, they're looking around, chit-chatting, Lee's commenting on the lovely cabinets. You know, they, she's just getting too confident that that house is empty. Yeah. They kind of separate from each other. Next thing you know, there's a boom, scream, fall down the stairs. <laughs> and then so Lee's, like, she's injured Damn, badly. In yeah, yeah, she's in the basement, she's in the pleasant. dark, yep. on her ass, yep. with her head like a concussion, maybe a broken ankle, maybe a sprained knee. And then, of course, she knows her partner's up there tussling with a crazy woman because she said she saw her face. It was like, oh, no, there's yeah. nothing there. I she, did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I that did. Was crazy. I did, too. I, <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love the gr- the way the friendship organically came together. Mm-hmm. Um, It was just, you know, it was just. Um, it was, it was, it was natural. It was it just fit everything that, yeah, it did. It it was, you know, um, when you say fit, I, I immediately think of Forrest Gump and Jenna mm-hmm. and peas and carrots, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they were like peas and carrots. It was, it was just perfect. Um, I did, I they did like that. for each other. At the hospital, after it's all said and done, the yeah. boss walks in, I get, you know, I guess whatever the captain or whatever her official title is. And she's given her like the ninth degree, basically. You tell me what happened. Whose idea was it to go in? She's like, it was mine. And she said, oh, really? Lee said the same thing. <laughs> she's like, I don't know if I should be happy I made this pairing or sorry about it, basically. Yes. She's like, yes. was this too perfect or just enough to get on my damn nerves? Because you two are two peas in a pod, basically. And she was like, well, yeah. too late. Right. Because, you know, we're in there now. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, mm, no take backs. Mm-hmm. We, we are like fully, in, we're fully vested, too bad so sad um but yeah i thought i i love their relationship this is a series um what's gonna happen with these two i look forward to to seeing what's gonna happen with them um now that you say the things that you did like what i did like about this book too was those little short chapters of reading the the mind of the killer Mm-hmm. Right, and we knew who the killer was, mm-hmm. but just kind of seeing, you know, like being that fly on the wall moment, mm-hmm. you know, I did like that of the the killer watching their next victim through the window. You know, they're standing outside, looking through their window, watching them. The killer watching um, Foster 
I like the action them. scene of her yeah. trying to kill Silva, Dr. Silva. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I like the action of it more than the watching of it because it wasn't as creepy as I wanted, but the action yeah, was like, oh, creepier. she stabbed her. She got her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, but you know what I mean? Like some in some books, we don't get that um, the viewpoint from the killer's point of view, you know, like even just that that creepiness of because, you know, like killers in most killers, they're they're stalking their prey. They're mm-hmm. watching. They're, you know, and sometimes in some of the books that we have, we've read as far, you know, because we do mystery thriller, we don't get that. Right. And I did enjoy that part of the mind of the killer and kind of how they stalk and how they watch. And Tracy didn't, didn't spend a lot of time. It was what, one or two pages? Yeah, it wasn't much. It wasn't much. And it was like just enough to kind of, you know, like take us out of the police procedural part, because that's the thing with police procedurals. It can become too mundane Mm -hmm. and to break it up and and to see from the, the killer's point of view. So those were that's the thing that I did like. And I think I had mentioned to you um, in a text message. Like Tracy, when she, cause she, she really does her research. Um, she will spend some time. I know she has spent time with Chicago um, police department, CPD. Um, you know, like some of the terms, some of the police terms she used. I really enjoy that. Like gold bricker, even, you know, even though I knew what it, you know, I knew context wise, but I was like, I want to look it up. Mm-hmm. So I went and looked up gold bricker and, you know, just some of the terminology that she uses. I think Tracy is a, um, her writing style. I do enjoy that. I do enjoy like that. Cause I think she has a bit of a, a literary fiction kind of style to her when yeah. she does her writing. And I do enjoy that part. So those were some of my likes. Okay. I feel like, you know, there were definitely lots of things to like about the book. One thing we should talk about is the audiobook narrator, because we both tried the audiobook on for size and we both ended up reading. Let me put my drink down, because, yes, let's talk about that. Yeah. So what did you think about the narrator? I struggled immensely. And I'm not saying that lightly <laughs> with um the narrator. Um it was not consistent. Her the voices were not consistent. I felt like they were all over the place. I guess that's the, the right way to say it. Um there was no consistency with tone, intonation. Um I felt like for example, if we said Amelia, Amelia's voice could change often throughout mm-hmm. the story. It was not a consistency. Like I could tell um, the difference between Amelia and I'll say Foster. Okay. There was no consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there was no even keel. It was, it was just, it was hard. It was very hard. It, and there were certain points where she kind of lulled me to, to like, to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I had to break out the book. Okay. And kind of try and read along yes. with it. Or at one point it was just like, I'm just going to read. Mm-hmm. And that's not what we do over here. Right. <laughs> On this podcast. Our um, theme is audio. Yeah, we do do so, a lot of audio. Um, yeah, and that's how we base it. And it was hard to follow through with the audio version. So, um, and I've listened to Shantae before, but it's mostly been nonfiction. And with nonfiction, you know, you're not changing. Um, well, in my opinion, I won't. I can't, I'm no 
expert on that. But with nonfiction, I don't think you have to, you know, you're not changing voices because the point of view and the, you know, you're not, you don't have to change. And it was, it was hard. It was, I struggled. Mm -hmm. The struggle was real. Yeah. I, um, let's see, when I started listening, I think I started at 1.8 and then I went to 2.0. I listened to Whatever else I listened to, I was listening at 2.0 because it kind of hid all of the issues that you mentioned. Because when you're going faster, you just don't hear it as much, which made it, yeah. I think, a little easier. But yeah, um, I think maybe this could have benefited from two distinctly different narrators. Maybe yeah, three. Um, so You know what? Three yeah, because there was a lot of characters at one point where, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I think I, I agree with you on that part. Yeah. So I um, thought the audiobook did not help the story. It did not help. Because, you, you know, usually audiobooks are supposed to level enhance. up, right? Yeah, so I know a narrator could only be as, you know, as good as the book. Plus, right, they're supposed to enhance, like you said, the book. But they can also drag it down, just like a bad actor can make a movie horrible because his, his or her acting skills are trash. So um, I don't think this narrator did any favors for this story. I'll just say that way. Um, yeah. But overall, I mean, I, I thought the story was good it was good i didn't love it i didn't hate it um i liked some stuff like i just pointed out and there were some flaws so it was fine mm -hmm. the story mm -hmm. not the narrator the story and i think yeah. i might not have even gotten that had i only stuck with the audio i think oh that i had <clears throat> the book helped yeah. a little bit reading some oh, of the it book helped. The, the book helped mm -hmm. let's just be honest let's just go let's come on now <laughs> the book helped <laughs> let's just be transparent <laughs> here that's what we do over here yeah the book reading the book helped tremendously mm -hmm. um there were some issues with with Shantae's narration and that's all I can say it it did not enhance it as a reader and I think I even shared it with you um there was a review of someone who is who struggles with his hearing and he he struggled a mm -hmm. lot so mm -hmm. for someone who has no i think he had vision yeah that's I why he, he listens to, right he listens because of his vision his um his issues with his vision so i just thought to myself as a person who does not have that disability I struggled, so I can imagine his struggle, yeah. and it was hard. It was really hard. Um, I could not focus. I could not get into the story. Um, I felt like she didn't put any um, personality. Can I? I don't know if that's the right term. Well, the reviewer used one word that I found very accurate. He used the word distracting. It was distracting mm -hmm. from the listening experience. Mm -hmm. And I, now, you know, like you just said, we listen to a lot of audio thriller mystery type audio books. And I literally found myself rewinding parts four or five times. I'm like, wait, I'm, what? Can I, I'm going to co-sign. Yeah. I'm co-signing. I'm co-signing. And to me, that's getting into wasted time zone like that's get, we're in the zone of wasting time now when i have to go back a hundred like three three air, three I can't seconds back. back right that i can't get back yeah that and not just that it's not enjoyable no not just wasted time but 
unenjoyable. Is that a word? Yes, I guess. We're going to make it a word today. <laughs> We're going to make it a word today. Mm -hmm. Unenjoyable wasted time. Yeah. Because I'm not sure what you just said. Yeah. Or I'm not sure how you conveyed. Is that yeah. Is that accurate for you? Because yeah. that's how I felt. Like, because with, with this kind of storyline, um, with mystery and suspense, I need different levels. Mm -hmm. I need to know when I'm at peak level or, you know, like that suspense level. So if this was a thriller, even if, like you were saying, even if we read it and we were like, nah, it wasn't a thriller. But I believe a good narrator could at least give me a little bit. Because I think they use a little bit of acting. A good narrator yeah. uses a little bit of acting. Yeah, yeah so some angst, and I didn't yeah. feel any. I didn't feel any moment where I was like, oh, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. I felt none of that in this story. I... If you would take my heart levels or whatever, I felt like I was fl I was like even killed the whole damn time. I'm just like this is how I felt. Yeah, yeah, and that was not helpful to the book at all. And and to be honest, like some of the parts, I felt like um, I was listening to the adults in Charlie Brown. Like I'm listening, and then all of a sudden, it's Look, like I'm, I had a I'm about to I, put my mic. A, I'm turning my out. mic off. Because <laughs> <laughs> you gotta laugh but it's like i blacked out for like a minute and 30 seconds because i'm like wait see we are what? too much alike <laughs> we are too much damn alike yeah i'm sorry but this is and i think we've said this before it, it gets scary but i was like that too because i was just like, <laughs> like what <laughs> yeah i'm sorry you guys don't see my facial expression but it was it was just like i think i might have missed something yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> the finger <laughs> 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 seconds because i know i just missed something yeah but when you haven't changed your tone I don't know that I've missed something. A a good narrator, I can tell from the way your voice changes that holy shit. Something's about something to happen. It, <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Tamra. <laughs> if we were in the same room, I high five you, elbow you, because you know we're in a pandemic and shit, you know. I would high five you. Yeah. A good narrator, I would be like, OMG, what the F did I just miss? Yeah. But I'm rewinding because I'm just like, huh? <laughs> what did she just say? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Not good. No. So Not at all. So yeah, that's our two. That's our take on the audiobook narrator. And honestly, if you guys listen to any of our podcasts about these books, we rarely have this kind of situation. We've had times this where is, we're you like, know "What? This is the first. Yeah. I believe this is our first. Matter of fact, I know when we were texting each other, I put that in my notes. Like, I think this is the first time that we've really." just did not we like adverse to the narrator yeah because we've had yeah. times where we're like Meh, it was fine or eh, yeah it was kind of slow like you they know. weren't great yeah. but they they weren't horrible yeah this one it was she noticeable didn't do any... yeah it was very noticeable yeah yeah so thank goodness i had the book as backup because i probably would not have really liked the book at all <laughs> You know what? I'm going to say shout out to our um, book club's members who at our last meeting mentioned. <laughs> I don't know if you had joined, had um, 
downloaded the book, but at our last book club's meeting, they were saying, ooh, it's on Kindle. Ooh, you can get the narration for like, what was it? $1.99 or something? Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So shout out to, what was it, Carrie mm-hmm. and somebody else. Shout out to y'all. Yeah. Without you guys and downloading the oh the book was like available on Kindle Unlimited or yep. something but it was cheap. it was you know for the low low so shout out to you guys thank you very much we we thank you for that so yeah without that and being able to read the print version and yeah. follow along or just even not following along just reading on your own um I don't know if I would have been able to get through this book without that mm-hmm. i'm just I gonna agree. say it yeah i agree yeah okay so you ready to rate the book i am okay let's rate it yeah. would you like to go first going... or should i go first i will i'll go first I'll okay go first. um i'm gonna give it a three because i didn't think it was horrible horrible um I think as we've said before, a three is, I probably wouldn't like. It was like, okay. Yeah, it was okay. I don't think I would say, girl, like I wouldn't say, I wouldn't recommend it. Like y'all really need to read this one. Um, It was okay. Um, I loved how she took the steps to write the, the, the procedural. It did take a little longer than I expected. Um. There were some plot holes, as we mentioned, throughout the podcast, and there were some issues, but it was an okay story. Um, I'm not going to give up on Tracy. I'm going to, I'm going to hang in there. She's still, you know, somebody that I like to read, and that's, that's my review. I'm sticking to it. All right. So (laughs) I'm going to also give it three stars. Um, I think it was fine. Right. Overall, it was fine. Uh, No major issues. But again, like you, I'm not going around recommending the book. Um, But I'm not opposed to seeing what the second book looks like. Uh, Although, you know, I prefer I've really been into audio books lately. So what, what would deter me is if she has the same narrator. If she changes the narrator. I will pick it up for uh, sure. I will pick it up for sure. That. But if she doesn't change the narrator, I probably yeah. won't because it depends on if I'm in the re- physical reading mood or not, right? If I'm right. in the zone where I want to read it, then I'll probably pick it up. But if You're she right. changes You're the right. narrator, I'll absolutely pick it up just to see. Yeah. And the thing is, is like the narrator that she had for her other series for the cast rain series i enjoyed her um and i get it you know this is a totally different character and she probably wants to switch it up but yeah you're right um i'm not sure if yeah i would do the print version um and i won't I can honestly say if it is going to be if it is Shantae again um I will probably do the print version I probably if if Scrib has it because you know I have a subscription I'll do the the combo but I'm not going to hop on it like immediately it's going to take me some time cuz I know what I'm about to deal with, mm-hmm. you know, like that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm going to have to prepare myself because I know it's like, it's going to be a struggle read. And I it's don't not like going to be an enjoyable read. Yeah. It's I not going like to be an enjoyable read. It's going to be a struggle read. So you're right. That's going to be my issue. If she's going to keep Shantae for book two, um, I'm going to struggle. Because I do want to read book two because I really want to see this relationship, this this partnership between Lee and Foster. Mm-hmm. It sounds fun. It's going to be good, I think. I think those two are going to grow together. And before you know it, they're going to be besties, just like she was with her previous partner. I feel like that yeah. potential is there. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, Shantae is going to deter me. Sorry, Shantae, for fiction and this one. I'm just going to stick with you and nonfiction. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, this is yeah. my first time hearing her. I don't think I've listened to her um, in anything else that I've listened to on audio. Chip so this more. was my first interaction. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, I'm a, a Tracy stan. So I'll buy it. I'll read it. And you know what? Like, and I don't know about you. There's some authors where you just read them and you kind of know what you're going to get and they're you're comfortable with their writing and you know it's like I know what I'm going to get mm-hmm. even though this one threw me for a little bit cuz it was longer and there were some things I'm just like <sighs> maybe she's just getting into the you know finding her footing with it you know this new character yeah mm-hmm. cuz I loved Cass Rains ooh loved mm-hmm. her Anyway. Well, you know, book two will be a, a good signifier for you if mm-hmm. because like, for example, it's very possible that one of your favorite authors just can't write a different series that well, because I have another author that I love all this series of books. She went off and wrote something different and it didn't hit. Mm. But in the other world, she is spot on chef's kiss perfection. And then this other thing she was trying out for two books. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, book two will tell you if this is one of those situations or if she's just getting warmed up, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're always looking for the next best. <laughs> I want but something yeah. to be like the next thing that I'm I like know. raving about. I want that. I want it. And we have I would had love it to find while. it this year. Let me get let me get one. Can this we, is March. I, can we get a five star? I would love Come one five, five star. star. Oh. I would love one. Hell, I would love two. I would love two, but I'd be happy and content with one. One. By June. Come on. Come through five star. I know. And if you guys know of a five star, hit us up, please. And not any BS. Y'all know we rate hard. Y'all know if we you stingy. List, right. You know if you listen to this podcast, we are stingy with it. So if it's a, you think it's a five star, let it be your best of the best five star <laughs> that you re- you recommend everybody and their mother read it. Bring it. Yeah. Don't play with us. Do yeah. not play with us. <laughs> It's exactly. been a long time. Look, can we just come on? Because we're done with this one. Yeah. Are we moving into the after show? Can let's we move do it. After- okay, y'all. Let's. We are done here on the podcast. <laughs> it's been a great time. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to come back next month when we enjoy our next buddy read to be announced in the book clubs app. So do join us over there because oh, I have yeah. not announced it yet. So join us Please there so come you know. Over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait before you go. If you guys, you guys are missing out because our discussions in the book clubs are so fun. Fire. They're so fun because we only scratch the surface on the podcast and there's so many different opinions and things brought up that we don't even get to on the podcast. So no, it's a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. Please come on over. Shelf Addiction. Um, Not just Buddy Reads, but your fantasy series too. So Mm -hmm. Guys, come on. Come on over. I I can't say enough. Yeah, I can't (laughs) say enough. It's always a good time. Yeah, I love it. It's a good time. But if you're trigger shy, you don't want to come, it's fine. We'll be right here on the podcast in your inbox again next month with another mystery or thriller ish read. (laughs) All right, so we'll end things there. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Bye, Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. 
You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.